Good morning again. That was a very interesting and important presentation that saves a lot of time of my, this is, this is the classification that Dr. Elmore showed that we haven't progressed much. And actually after I published this in the book, I realized that this was discovered in or written in Germany since 1890. Uh, I will not go through the, these different scores, which we all know, and they are very valuable. Um, uh, Dr. Amor uh, already described this, which is very important, so I would save time about this. And I'll just go through this. This is actually a sort of an attempt to make the GMS score easier. Uh, and instead of going to 12, we make it into 10. And this was discussed among the scientific committee before the, con the Frankfurt meeting, and this is what we came up to. But if you look at what Dr. Elmore described as 10, 11, 12, you'll find that it is all coming into this category, perineal hypospadias, which by definition as a syndromic feature have severe cordy. By definition, they have small glands, and by definition, they would have a hypoplastic urethral plate. So to be honest, although we developed this together as a group of, or modified this, not developed to be more accurate, as a group of six from the GMS score, and we tried to make it into 10, you will find what Dr. Moll described as the group with how, who have high complication, they are actually, in fact, grade four perineal hypospadias where you need to divide the urethral plate. The other three, you don't need to divide the urethral plate. So for example, if you have a patient with penoscrotal or mid penile hypospadias and you have severe cordy and you have to divide the urethral plate, which should automatically go into grade four. Otherwise, you do not need to divide the urethral plate and you will have this. We reviewed in the Hypospadian Center our data during the past 10 years and this is actually what I use with my patients in my praxis. I call, I tell the patient, depending on the meters, I would divide it into grade one, two, three, and four. And by grade four, by definition, I would need to divide the urethral plate. And they would know that this child would eventually have the urethroplasty in the second operation and this will be assessed when I deal with the foreskin in the third operation. However, this group three, which group four would be in Dr. Elmore already, the between 10 and 12, and probably group three is the group where you may and you may not decide to develop the urethral plate, and this is a decision made intraoperatively. And I tell the parents, if I find the cordy is severe, I would have to divide it, the urethral plate, it will be managed as a grade four. So, and this is what I tell them. The operation takes about one hour in grade one and two, two hours in grade three, two hours in two operations in grade four, complications in one year. This is what I have in my personal series. This complications rate double if you follow the patients to, for more than 10 years. So instead of distal, I have 5% complication, it becomes 10 in 10 years follow-up. Um, there are other two points which Dr. Elmore alluded to. This is actually a more detailed preoperative assessment. It's very nice, it's very conclusive, but it's not easy to convince people to follow. I remember I was discussing this with Peter Kokau before the Frankfurt meeting, and he said, Ahmed, there are two ways. Make it simple that people would follow it, or, or make it F complicated, like what we do in Great Ormond Street. We tried to make it as simple as possible, and as I said, what I use in my practice is simply grade one, two, three, four, and you will find automatically grade four. It's very unlikely 
that you have a very small glands with a well-developed penile shaft. They are all come together as one package. There is more about hyperspadius checklist, which is very complicated. I think we'll leave the operative and post-operative probably to discuss in Vienna. Thank you very much.